So, you know, you can still run it with that workaround, but you know, HTML5 is better. So, so let me just use the HTML5 version to show you uh, what you can also see with the Flash version. <laughs> so HTML5 version is better um, mainly in that it's, um, it runs on any device. Um, so the Flash versions won't run on mobile devices. This simulation will run on tablets, on phones, on practically any modern device. So, so um, this is a, a spring simulator. Uh, I guess that energy graph is a little bit um, in the way, oh wait, I need to, so this is one of the nice thing about simulation. I can, um, so right now this oscillation that I set off at the beginning, it kind of gets smaller towards the end because of uh, what's simulated in as a damping. That's a simulating real world processes like friction and air resistance that tends to convert this mechanical energy into thermal energy. Um, <laughs> when I'm trying to describe an ideal system that kind of gets in the way, so I got rid of damping. So if I were to show energy graph again, this will go on forever. So I have that. And let's see here, can I, yeah, I can control the simulation speed. That's good because sometimes I'll want to talk, want to talk for a while. So, um, so okay. So, so let me quickly um, uh, overview the idea of uh, natural oscillation frequency, which uh, so. Okay, that's a good place. So this uh, line is the mass equilibrium. Having this line is useful for illustrating the amplitude of oscillation, uh, as in the maximum displacement from this equilibrium position. Uh, so, so if I start off the mass from here, let me put a movable line here. Uh, the distance separation from here to here would be the amplitude. And as this oscillates, it's going to go about the same amount of distance above the equilibrium and then below. So if I let the simulation run, that's what that looks like. And uh, I can do period trace to show what one period looks like in this setup. So, the idea of natural frequency of oscillation comes from this um, rather interesting, which could be experimental observation. If I measure this period, you will see that the period, which is uh, related to the frequency and the angular frequency in ways that you will see in the chapter, um, it remains constant under uh, quite a bit of different circumstances. So I'm gonna run this um, stopwatch at the next cycle. So, and as I measure a single period, um, sorry, that was a bit, <laughs> let me catch it on its downward cycle so that it matches the graph that you will, is it? Okay, I think it's a sw switching each time around. Okay, I'm gonna catch it here. Okay, so, and I'll measure it for one period. So here the period is about 0.82 seconds. Okay, and when I change some parameters of the oscillation here, for example, make the amplitude larger, uh, larger by uh, uh, let's say factor of three. So this is about twice the distance, three times distance. The, the uh, amplitude of oscillation is now going to be three times uh, what it was before. So when I run the simulation and let me, okay, so I'm gonna let that go and I'll catch it the next time. Okay, reset and then Catch it here. Even though it's uh, traveling three times the distance, you see that the period remains the same. 
And uh, this uh, relates to what we call natural frequency of oscillation. When you have a spring mass system, it has a frequency at which it naturally oscillates. Now, it, it can be changed, but in order to change it, you have to change the properties of the system itself. Um, for example, you could change the mass. Instead of hanging a 100 gram mass, you could hang this larger mass, then, then its period would be, it should be smaller. Um, so if I let it run, let me just start the simulation here. And so, okay. Uh, let me catch it on the next time. Oops, oh, sorry, I missed it. Okay, I'm gonna catch it on, is it always on the way up? Okay, so I'll catch it on the way up. Yeah, the period is longer, meaning it's a uh, um, slower oscillation. Oh, it looks faster because I'm on normal. <laughs> Let me do it again on slow so that it kind of matches up. Um, or Yeah, let me just spend this time. Um, so it goes down and then on its way up, I'll catch it. Uh, okay, on its way up. It's moving at about half the speed that it was moving before. So, um, yeah, and, and, and this can actually be used to measure the mass. That's one of the ways you can figure out this mystery mass. So, um, it's, yeah. So you can change the period by changing the mass, that's one. And you can also change the period by not changing the mass, but by changing the, uh, by, by changing the, the property of the spring. So um, just to double check, this is, um, this one should have about 0.8 second period. Let's just double check to be sure. Uh, I think I clicked it a little too fast. So this was the system we started out with before. Now, if I make the spring um, stiffer, uh, for example, make it have a larger spring constant, then you will see that you will see that uh, it oscillates faster. So it's a period that will be smaller. So let me pull it down here, and when I let it go, I'll just let it go for one cycle and then catch it on the next time it's on the way down. you see that period is smaller. Now, um, but given the same, um, let me just reset everything. Given the same properties of the mass of the spring, then this uh, natural oscillation frequency, it's a constant. It's a, um, it's a characteristic feature of what we call simple harmonic oscillators. And there's a reason we uh, cover this idea of simple harmonic oscillator or harmonic oscillator. It's, um, it's because, um, so, you know, if you're just thinking of how often am I going to see a mass on a spring, then yeah, you're not gonna see that that often. But the reason this is useful is that there are just so many systems in the real world that can be approximated just like this uh, mass on a spring like a system. One example of that is actually pendulum. So, you know, there's nothing like a spring here. It's just, a, it's pendulum. It's a mass hanging at the end of a string or a rod. And um, when you take a look at it, you will see that it um, exhibits properties similar to a simple harmonic oscillator. Let me uh, use this period of timer to measure a period uh, again. <laughs> so, so at this very small oscillation, when I measure the period, you see that the period is 1.7 second or so. And if I change this oscillation amplitude so that it's uh, oscillating at a larger amplitude, you'll find that the period is about 1.7, so about the same. Now, if you're watching this carefully, you will not notice that it's changed a little bit. So at this angle here, 
it's 1.68 second. And when I move this to a smaller size, um, so about two degrees, it's not 1.68 second anymore. It's quite close to 1.68 second, but it's not quite 1.68 second. Now, if I were measuring this by hand, I would have said, oh, it's just my reaction time. I can't get it exactly right every single time. But this is a period of clock. It's built into the simulation. It always gets the exact same time. So, so this illustrates the way in which uh, many systems in the real world behave like a simple harmonic oscillator in this way. They, um, you can approximate them as a simple harmonic oscillator. You can, so, so many real world systems are not exactly like a mess on a spring. That's kind of an idealized system. It has a certain properties that one always hold. But when you take a real world system, put it under certain conditions, then very closely it follows the properties of simple harmonic oscillator. So this is one example. When, it's, uh, uh, when pendulum is oscillating at small angles, the period or the natural oscillation frequency is approximately constant at a value. So right now this is at two degrees and at two degrees, the period we measured was 1.6785 seconds. Um, yeah, let me write that down somewhere because I'm gonna start to forget it if I try to remember it. So um, let me just to build a table so that you can kind of see how it changes. At two degrees, I have a period. So this is the gonna be the angle, um, amplitude, and this is gonna be the period time. Uh, I have 1.6785 seconds at two degrees. Let me try doubling the amplitude. So instead of two, let's have it at four degrees. And when I measure the period, it's uh, close to this value, but not quite. At four degrees, it's uh, 1.6789 seconds. And uh, let me just double each time. I think uh, then it's not gonna take too many tries to actually cover the whole range. Let me set this at eight degrees and measure the period again. And it's still quite close. And this is what I mean. This is approximately simple harmonic oscillator. So between two to eight degrees, the amplitude changed by a factor of four, but the period barely budged a little bit by uh, like a 1.5 millisecond or about two milliseconds, I guess. It's practically unmeasurable, except that I have a very good simulation. Let me try setting this at 16 degrees. Let's keep doubling the amplitude. So at 16 degrees, it's okay. Now if I round it, it'll be 1.69 seconds instead of 1.68. So it's a beginning to change here. And um, it's a beginning to change in a more measurable way. And this is where you see approximation starting to break down. This is at these larger angles is where you will see the, the period does depend on the, the amplitude of oscillation. And uh, we call this uh, N harmonicity. Sorry, this is getting to be a little annoying. Let me just write that down. It's uh, becoming from a harmonic oscillator, it's becoming an N, uh, A harmonic or N harmonic oscillator. So at 32 degrees, period is 1.7117 uh, seconds. And at, by this point, I can start to measure it by hand if I take more than a single period. So let me move this to now 64 degrees and see what that looks like. I think that's where I'll end it. So let me measure the period here. Now this pendulum is moving faster, especially at the bottom. But because it's moving such a longer distance, it, uh, it takes a longer period. And in the case of the Masona spring, uh, simple harmonic oscillator, this, uh, 
uh, those to balance that, uh, how fast it moves and the longer distance it has to travel, it balanced out to keep the period the same. But with this real world object, like a pendulum, it, it doesn't quite, it starts to um, not exactly balance out so that the period does eventually start to change. And, but it takes a quite a large amplitude of oscillation before you see that in a noticeable way. So, and um, so you will see this kind of an example of a simple harmonic oscillator in many different situations. Basically, anytime you approximate motion of something around a stable equilibrium, if you look at small enough amount of motion, it'll look like a simple harmonic oscillator um, because it, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's uh, really why we uh, spend so much time on um, you know, mass on a spring, which is kind of um, um, unrealistic. It's not something that you would see that often because this becomes a model for real world things that, uh, so maybe you will never have to deal with the pendulum, but if you are dealing with like chemistry, uh, molecular bonds, the vibration of those molecular bonds can also be approximated as kind of a simple harmonic oscillator, so. So yeah, this is uh, uh, the, the demonstration of a pendulum as a kind of an approximate simple harmonic oscillator.